Hey, I'm Mark Silver, if you don't know me, photographer, author in Carmel, California. Well, listen, I want to introduce you to our guest. Ed Kashi is an acclaimed photojournalist who uses photography to explore social issues you can see in these images, and you'll see in a moment some of the other ones we're talking about. And Ed, we're really happy to have you back with us on Advancing Your Photography. Thanks Thank for joining you, us. Thanks, and welcome, everyone. You know, when you're teaching workshops, what are the, some of the things that you have to overcome or, or help your students with? And you showed us, you, you gave me this image as an example of not shooting under ideal lighting conditions. Tell us what's going on here and, and what happened and why, what, were the, what were the lighting conditions? Yeah, and I, so I want to preface this with an anecdote. Um, years ago when I was in mid-90s when I was, you know, starting to work with National Geographic, on a consistent basis and i remember i was working with a writer there who had worked a lot with William albert allard one of the masters of of um color photography certainly and i said to the writer you know oh man the light really sucks and he looked at me and said well bill allard says there's no such thing as bad light it's just bad photographs <laughs> and true. so I, which of course back then i was like yeah screw that shit. you know anyway easy for him to say but so scroll to the present and all those years, decades between, and what I come to, the way I interpret what I think Bill was saying is that it's really how you see light. So in this case, this was an image made last year in Nicaragua as part of a ongoing project about kidney disease. And in Nicaragua and Central America, it particularly affects sugarcane workers. Uh -huh. So, and I've been in the sugarcane fields in that region and other parts of the world many, many times. And, you know, the reality is, as with so much work done as photojournalists or documentarians, we can't choose when we are going to need to make a picture. You know, if our, the conditions are generally dictated by the subject matter, by the characters, by the dynamics of our um, of this topic or the story we're covering. So in this case, you know, whatever, it's 11 o'clock or midday, the light is horrible. You know, there's maybe a little bit of like diffusion in the sky because yeah. it's humid, but basically you've got direct midday sun. It's like a hundred degrees, you know, as a photographer, you'd be like, get me the hell out of here. Right. I'll come back in five hours. Well, I can't do that. So what do I do? I look, I look at what I look at, where is the light actually falling? You know, and then I'm examining, okay, so the white hats, those are going to be like impenetrable highlights. But what I can do is pick an angle of approach where I use the light almost to sculpt the scene, you know, so that I'm working with form in this case, you know, or action. In this case, it's mostly form. Yeah. And then, and then allowing, you know, okay, it's not going to be beautiful, warm, textured, tones because it's harsh but still and this is the beauty of working in photoshop now where we have the digital darkroom especially in color that you know then you can in post-production tone down some of those highlights so yeah. so in brief i think the, the key takeaway when you either want to or have to work in quote unquote bad light is is don't just deny it look at it and look you know so maybe let's say in this case not to belabor this point but i wasn't interested in their faces if i wanted to capture their faces then it would have been very difficult right frankly in this light right but uh, unless i waited until you know they're at the apex of their movement and their faces is, is reaching towards the, the the light source towards the sun but what i was looking here for is form and action a sense of place and the other thing to remember is sometimes like in this case the fact that it's hot beating sun is part of the story because this is about the impact of heat stress on workers there you go another thing that i'm, I'm just going to move to this next image because we were talking before we actually went on the air about gaining access and i think that's a huge point a lot of people want to know about it in, in terms of photojournalism or street photography. And we have this image. And tell us about how you gained access and what, what was going on here. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, I was, Mark and I were talking about this before we went on. But so this is also Nicaragua. 
and it's from the same project, but this image was not made last year. It was made, I think, 2013 or 2014. I've been working on this project now for almost eight years. And um, this is the funeral of a sugarcane worker who had died from this disease, a chronic kidney disease of non-traditional diseases. And that's the, that's the focus of, of this ongoing project. And so it was one of my first times visiting, this is in Chichigalpa, Nicaragua, which is like the epicenter of this disease in Central America. And, you know, it, as I was remarking uh, to Mark uh, before we went on, is like sometimes I look at images like this and I wonder like, you know, how the hell did I do this? Like, you know, as I'm getting older, I have, I've grown kids, you know, I have now experienced so much in my life, both through my work and through my personal life, that I'm actually way more sensitized than when I was 20, 30 years old, even 40 years old doing this work. Right. I'm way more sensitized to my impact on the scene. You know, when you're younger, generally speaking, that isn't to say that I know some incredibly sensitive folks in their 20s who in some ways know things about this idea of uh, access and sensitivity that it maybe took me 20 or 30, frankly, to truly understand. But um, I guess so anyway, when doing this kind of work, it's, uh, it's so important to think about your impact on the scene. Now, in this case, um, you know, the people were really welcoming, were warm. Um, I had um, people from the community with me, working hand in glove with me so that I knew, for the most part, my presence had been explained to them. Right. So they had gone to the, you know, the grandparents and the, you know, the, the, the wife who's been left behind to just in, in this sensitive uh, d and discreet way, explain this is who this guy is. This is why he's here. And then... What you get in, what, what happens in when it's, you know, in the perfect world is then you get actually the buy-in of the people because then they realize, okay, this, this cider is here to tell our story and it's a story that is killing or sickening 70% of the men in this community. Amazing. So, you know, in this case, you know, thankfully, thankfully they accepted me and I hope I didn't hurt anyone or trample on their, this sacred ceremony for them. But this is part of navigating doing this kind of work. And this is why this kind of imagery is not easy to do. Yeah. That in a sense, the photographic part is the easiest part, if you like. And it's everything that you do on a human level, on a logistical level, especially a human level, to get yourself to this time in this place in time and space where this is happening and you've gotten proper permission and, you know, allows you to work. And it's still difficult. I'm, I was crying while I was taking this in, making this image. And, you know, I'm, you know, you're hearing the cries of the daughter, like, you know, where's my father in Spanish? Where's my father? Oh, it was like a dirge over and over again. Everyone is like bawling their eyes out because it's just such a sad scene. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.